So, if we do that, what happens in the brain? I'm going to briefly explain you some idea. One is that we have, um, let's say, I have one nerve cell. The sending nerve cell wants to send a package of information to the receiving nerve cell and wants to transmit an information. Like I see an object and I want this nerve cell to do something with this information. So this nerve cell will transmit to the next nerve cell. So there's like electrical information passing here. Then here between there's a chemical transmission. They call that neurotransmitters. And by the way, neurotransmitters are the same type of molecules like hormones. Only the difference is that a hormone is something the brain sends to the blood so that all organs can take profit of it and can choose if they need that information. And for instance, if I want to tell to my body, please get stressed, then my brain says to my hypothalamus, send adrenaline to the whole system and adrenaline will be sent to the blood and all the organs that need to know, like the heart needs to pump fast it takes the information because there are some receptors in the heart for this adrenaline and my blood pressure goes higher because there are some receptors in all the arteria of my body because they contract because they need to get more blood to the muscles for instance for an emergency reaction and so there's a lot of places where neuro, uh, hormones are received. Neurons, by the way, they send neurotransmitters similar, like for instance, the noradrenaline is a kind of a molecule that's almost the same as adrenaline, there's a small chemical difference. Noradrenaline is sent from one nerve cell to the next one, and here this chemical transmission of noradrenaline, and then here electrical impulse will go further again. Now, okay, nice to know. If you do this 30 days in a row, several times per day, what will happen? Sometimes this one nerve cell will get two connections with the other nerve cell. So we see that there is a potential of doubling the amount of connections. That's one mechanism, but there's like altogether five mechanisms. I'm just mentioning some brief to give you an insight because we are not training you to become medical doctors or our neurophysiologists. So, the other thing that can happen is that you transmit here electrical information will be a neurotransmitter that transmits to the next nerve cell and then this cell will develop more receptors to receive this noradrenaline for instance and to transmit. So it becomes more sensitive. That means that with less effort the new habit becomes active in the future because there's more receptors. So there is already one mechanism is there's two connections instead of one, there's more receptors, also the, recep the sensitivity of one receptor can be increased, that's also another mechanism. Another one is that there are some modulation neurons, that there can be a neuron that on the side of this sending neuron gives a signal accelerate, accelerate, I help you to accelerate, so that facilitates the full process. So there's a lot of mechanisms in the brain and um, some have been discovered by the Nobel Prize winner Kendall, um, who is a bright guy and did interesting research on this, and probably many more have to be discovered in the future yet, because science is developing every day. Now, knowing this, what's the conclusion? That means if we want to develop, besides the old undesired habit or less desired habit, a new, more desired habit, we have to repeat the solution pattern several times per day, 30 days in a row. If we do that, the two patterns will have like the same competitiveness or attractiveness to the brain. And we can choose. Now if then, after this, we continue to focusing on training our brain to choose more for the more interesting new habit here, then there's like a kind of habit on a habit, namely the habit has been developed and we learn to develop the habit of choosing for the new more attractive habit. And also that becomes a habit and when that has happened of course then the new habit is like something almost unconscious that remains like mainstream in our life and we can still choose for the old habit because maybe there are circumstances where the old habit has useful advantages.
depends on the type of habit we are talking about. So we can still choose for it, but it becomes more interesting in 99.9% .9 of the times to choose for the new one, so we will do that. But that's something we'll have to train. So first we have to train the 30 days to develop the habit. And then the next thing is that during six months, six months is a period in time, life, where most average problems reoccur several times. There's big challenges, exceptional challenges, like the death of someone that we love, losing a job, uh, very dangerous or fatal disease. There are things that happen only once and it can be sometimes disturbing and difficult to find a way back. But most of the normal challenges have happened within six months. It means that to develop the second level of habit, let's say, if you train for 30 days, you have the basic habit. And the habit to permanently learn to choose for the habit, if during the six months, every time when you forget to apply the first habit, and I promise you it will happen several times, I, I think you can count it at least three or four times and maybe even more. You will have days, sometimes it's hours, sometimes it's days, it can even be weeks, but we try to keep it as short as possible and that's what you will learn in the second month and the third month of the program if you continue so far. Um, so there will be moments that you will forget to apply the habit. Something happens in your life, a quarrel with someone, a disappointment, a project that failed, uh, a love relationship that broke or whatever and you will forget to do what you know already how to do, the new habit. And then the challenge is that we will have a module on how to learn to prevent and correct relapse, if we can call it relapse, because um, if you can correct it, it's maybe not a real relapse. It would be a potential relapse if you wouldn't know this theory of how to correct it, that's true. So that means that there can be a beginning relapse and you learn to correct it and say, okay, now I want to choose for this new habit and again that I've decided that I want to choose for. If you do that during six months, always to correct as fast as possible and being tolerant to yourself because sometimes it will take more time than you want because you still have to learn something. Some moments you will see that it gets faster. And what we see that people who apply this during six months, they have these moments of mini relapse because I don't know a better word for it. If you would know one, send me an email and I'll use it in the next upgrade of the program. But these moments of mini relapse are the interesting moments to learn to back, get back on track to the old, not to the new habit. And that's what you want to learn to do. Now with any problem, that's a problem, because later we will make a distinction between what's a problem and what's a limitation. But that's not for now, that's for within some weeks from now that we are going to explain, explore that more. But at this moment, what's very important is that you know that um, you can always get back on track. You can first develop a new habit for an old one, and then you can develop the habit to almost permanently, at least when it's useful, because you still have the rational free choice, you remain free person, you become even more free, because if you have more useful habits, you don't have to spend all this energy on unuseful habits of the past, so you get more free. And what we often see is that people first, most people first start a program because they, they are confronted with a problematic issue that they don't know how to solve, and then they start to solve the problem. And then they learned in the program how to learn to develop new habits. And then many decide to continue to learn higher habits. For some people it can be leadership related habits if they have a responsibility at the workplace. But it can also be that they want to develop more in communication skills or people skills. Or it can be skills like creativity or many other ones. And once you have learned how you can learn and develop new habits, and that you know you have a basic system, you get some insights in what's important, you get the right questions to have the right reflection almost on a daily basis, 
so that always you are refocused on what you really want to achieve and you get some guidance on how to achieve it, yeah, of course, then it becomes funny and interesting to learn because we're in the beginning, sometimes our minds are distracted by suffering or unhappiness or whatever thing. After a while, it becomes so pleasant to learn new things, but that's maybe too early for you now to believe, I don't know, it depends on the stage we are in for the moment.